all right so now we learned about fundamental set of solutions in previous chapters so what did we learn let's take a simple differential equation a second order differential equation just like this now how many solutions should you have in the fundamental set of solutions for this differential equations so let's say this is a homogeneous differential equation we should have two solutions y1 and y2 the reason is this is second order right and then we said y1 and y2 should be in fact solutions remember if you want to verify that a given set this is a given set of functions if they are to be a fundamental set of solutions then they have to be solutions first right so that is what we check first you should have appropriate number of solutions order and the number of solutions should match then they should be in fact solution then what is the third thing that you need to check y1 and y2 or these solutions should not be copies of each other right or they should be linearly independent functions these functions should be completely different functions from each other that is the meaning so that is what you call a fundamental set of solution for a normal differential equation but how about if you have a system of differential equation so let's write the matrix form okay so x prime is equal to x now i'm only talking about homogeneous ones all right so how many solutions you should have that's a question what is the order here well we have a first order we are only talking about talking about first order a differential equation system of differential equations does that mean we only have one solution no let's say your matrix it depends on the size of the matrix let's say you have a n by n matrix o that means how many dependent variables you have n dependent variables right x1 x2 xn then you should have n solution vectors okay so for example if you have a 2 by 2 system 1 2 3 4 here this is a 2 by 2 matrix so you should have two vectors in your solution set okay before you talk about fundamental set of solutions then the second thing is guess what they have to be solutions same as before you should verify that each of these vectors you have in fact solutions and how to do that we learn it in the one of the previous videos what is the third thing guess what is it they have to be linearly independent vectors which is exactly what we learned in the previous video right uh, how to find whether the two vectors are linearly independent or not so if you satisfy these three conditions you get a fundamental set of solutions for a system of differential equations it is same thing as what we learn in chapter 4 here the only difference is now we do not work with the order of the differential equation rather we work with the size of the coefficient matrix or the number of dependent variables you have right so here n by n matrix will have n dependent variables so you should have n solution vectors okay all right and then once you find this fundamental set of solutions what you can do is you take the linear combination of them c1 times x1 plus c2 times x2 and so and so on you can get right the general solution okay so general solution or the complementary solution because we are working with the homogeneous equations so let's look at an example this example is very important because i'm going to teach you how to work with initial value problems which is totally different so be with me until the end of this video so verify that this is a fundamental set of solution for this system this is two by two so we sh do we have two vectors yes then we have to make sure that each of these vectors are solutions in fact so let's do it for one okay i will do it for just one so let's take the vector x1 e to the 2t e to the 2t okay i will walk you through it so what you do is you take the left hand side so the left hand side is x prime right 
because that is the equation what the equation says x prime is equal to a times x so x prime means you take the x1 prime so you differentiate x1 with respect to t so if you differentiate 2 comes out so that is how you get 2e to the 2t and 2e to the 2t here so this is the left hand side then what you do is you take a then we talk about the right hand side a is 1 1 1 1 then you oops sorry and then you multiply it by e to the 2t e to the 2t x1 see whether you get the same left hand side okay all right so let's see so here 1 times e to the 2t e to the 2t 1 times e to the 2t plus e to the 2t here 1 times e to the 2t e to the 2t plus 1 times e to the 2t e to the 2t so here we get 2 e to the 2t 2 e to the 2t just like here so they are the same thing so yes it satisfies the differential equation because left hand side and right hand side is same so we do the same for x2 x2 is 1 negative 1 so first we find the left hand side x prime is well if you differentiate this constant you get 0 now you take the right hand side and multiply a by the x2 so 1 times 1 is 1 1 times negative 1 is plus negative 1 here 1 times 1 is 1 1 times negative 1 is negative 1 so here you get definitely 0 0 right so the left hand side and right hand side are same so x2 is also a solution so we are good with the both conditions now one thing that students forget is that's where you that's not where you stop you have to check the linear independence okay so don't forget about that so what you do is you take these two vectors x1 is e to the 2t e to the 2t and the x2 is 1 negative 1 i believe and then you take the vronsky now you put them in the relevant columns column 1 and column 2 so this is x1 this is x2 now you take the determinant here so if you take the determinant you multiply these two it's negative e to the 2t minus now these two e to the 2t so this is negative 2 e to the 2t which is not zero okay in the interval negative infinity to infinity so these two vectors x1 and x2 form a fundamental set of solutions for this system of differential equations so you can write the solution as a linear combination of x1 and x2 that means c1 times x1 plus c2 times x2 okay all right now let's say now here's the interesting part let's say you have an initial condition now you see initial condition is a vector when t is equal to 0 x is 2 3 how do you use that to find c1 and c2 so let me show you that okay all right so let's do it as a one problem rather than me reading through the problem so c1 this is the general solution plus c2 1 negative 1 here's what you do so when t is equal to 0 x is 2 3 not 2 thirds 3 so what you do is you substitute t is equal to 0 for the equation same okay then x should be a vector it's the differences we are working with vectors c1 when you substitute t is equal to 0 e to the 0 is 1 here e to the 0 is 1 right good plus here you don't have anything to sub no t it's okay it's one negative one that doesn't mean it goes away now how do you solve this for c1 and c2 well you cannot solve it in this way what i do is i try to come up with two equations from here just like what we had in chapter four so how do we get two equations we go by the rows so let's take the first row first row on the left is 2 on the right it's c1 times 1 is c1 plus c2 times 1 is c2 so that's the first equation now you go to the second row 3 is equal to c1 times 1 plus c2 times here negative 1 minus c2 is here okay so here we get two equations so that is how you solve an initial value problem so you substitute it into the uh, general solution for t is equal to 0 okay and then get those equations separately get rid of the matrix forms or the vector form i should say 
correctly get rid of the vector forms look row by row corresponding row first row second row then go to the third row likewise get these two equations so from now on you know right add the first two equations because c2 cancel out 2 plus 3 is 5 c1 plus c1 is 2 c1 so c1 is 5 over 2 so we know c1 is 5 over 2 so 2 is equal to 5 over 2 plus c2 right from the first equation so c2 is 2 minus 5 over 2 so that means negative half so c1 is 5 over 2 c2 is negative half so then we can write the general solution as c1 is 5 over 2 okay e to the 2t e to the 2t c2 is negative half 1 negative 1 right now what i can do is furthermore i can combine this so let's multiply by c1 so here this is 5 over 2 e to the 2t combine the first row minus half times 1 is half so just looking at the first row okay now look at the second row 5 over 2 e to the 2t minus half times minus 1 plus half so likewise i can write the solution as a 1 vector okay so that's a that's just an optional simplification okay all right so that is how you work with initial value problems and fundamental set of solutions thank you